Hello, welcome to Cat's Love, and today I'm going back to my cat breed profile series to talk about the Kara Cat. No, I'm not talking about the Kara Cow, the wild cat. I'm talking about the domesticated house cat version, the Kara Cat. But I'll talk more on that later. Let's take a look at the history of the Kara Cat and how it came to be. The story begins in the 1990s at the Moscow Zoo, where a street cat snuck into an enclosure with the Kara Cow, the wild cat. A few months later, a kitten was born. The kitten was a hybrid between the Caracal and the street cat, but they couldn't breed any further as the kitten was infertile. So the breed technically originated in Russia, although the American breeders started crossing the Caracal with Abyssinian cats in the early 2000s. And like that, the idea of breeding the Caracal with domesticated cats basically spread like a wildfire. A breeder in Ukraine whose name is Anna Kuzmina started to make care cats in 2011 by breeding Kazi cats, serval cats, and savannah cats. In fact, her and one other cattery in Russia are the only ones who received the care cat, making this breed very rare. The care cat is said to be an extremely difficult breed to produce and has an experimental breed title from the International Cat Association. But the breed was sadly only made for money leading to it being a controversial topic as it's somewhat seen as humans exploiting animals. But that's the history of the care cat. Here's how to take care of the care cat's coat. You should at least comb their coat at least every week or every other day, I would say. It gets difficult when it comes to grooming as it basically depends on which breed was bred with the care cow during breeding sessions. If it's the normal selection of breeds, like the Abyssinian, Serval, and Kazi, then I would comb their coat at least every other day or every week. But it gets complicated. Anyway, here is how to take care of the Care Cat. This breed is actually very high maintenance. The Care Cat is a very affectionate breed, and compared to their Care Cow origination, they aren't that aggressive. One thing is for sure when getting the Care Cat, you will never get bored. You are practically taking care of a wild cat. There will be something new every day. The care cat's shenanigans and buffoonery will always give you something to do. And the care cat will quickly attach itself to its owner, so be ready for this cat to basically follow you around everywhere. They are a very clingy cat breed. They do require a large living space though, so I would say the bigger the area, the better. This breed adores outdoor walks and will play fetch. I wouldn't get this cat breed any ordinary catnip toy or really any ordinary cat toy in general. They do originate from the Caracal and they will likely rip a cat toy to shreds. May I recommend dog toys for this breed? Anyways, the Caracat of course needs to eat. Here are the recommended cat foods that I would get for this breed. First of all, you should only feed this cat meat. No grains, no carbohydrates, and no high fat foods. In fact, it's recommended to feed the Caracat raw meats such as beef, chicken, rabbit, and certainly quail, but do not feed them pork. They are not a big fan of pork, fish, and any of that other stuff. They will likely deny ordinary cat food, so I would certainly have them on a raw meat diet. This got passed down from the Caracal, who would eat their food raw in the wild. Yeah, I don't know why I felt the need to include in the script that they ate their prey raw. Of course they ate it raw, it's not like they had the option to slow roast it in a crock pot. Anyway, let's move on to our next and newest segment, healthcare. So the care cat inherited the care cow's good health. In fact, the care cat has a really good digestive system to where they can digest raw meat and bones. And they can even go without water for five days. That doesn't mean you feed them like a barbarian, strictly bones and water every three days. They still need to be fed daily. Breeders of the care cats say that they have strong bones and immunity too. I mean, just by looking at this breed, you can certainly tell that they take a lot of traits from the care cow. Let's analyze and look at all the unique features of this breed. So when you first look at this, what's the first thing that came to your mind? The obvious ones are the care cow, uh, that one wild cat, floppa? So the breeders basically took the look of this wild cat and shrunk it down to house cat size. So basically everything from the coat colors and patterns to the unique features all came from the care cow. But let's do a more in-depth analysis. The Caracas's most unique feature is their tall ears with the little fluff on the tips, their obvious wildcat look, and their sandy tipped fur. They are a large sized cat and at their full height they can be up to your waist. They also have very pretty eyes and a long tail. The Caracat usually has a sandy coat color with amber shaded in. They can also have brown, chocolate, and gray fur. 
they usually either have a tabby shaded or tipped coat pattern. Anyways, I usually do a segment where I talk about the breeds that are similar to this and all that, but I mean, the really only cat that's similar to this is the Abyssinian and the Caracal, the wild cat, of course. Let's move on to the final fun facts. The FFF. Did you know that the Caracat can weigh from 15 to 42 pounds? Wow. They weigh more than four gallons of paint, which is crazy, but it's true. The Caracat can live up to 15 years or more. And did you know that this cat breed is actually one of the most expensive cat breeds out there? This breed can cost up to $15,000, costing more than some cars. And their temperament is wild, loving, clingy, and they kind of have a dog-like personality. And they are also a very controversial breed. And so should you get the Caracat? Well, it's time for me to talk about the controversy behind this breed. First of all, having a 42 pound cat in your house that acts like a Caracal, who is well known for its vicious attitude, will likely get you injured, especially scratched. Plus the stress the Caracat mothers go through having to constantly be bred, and the fact that they're only being bred for money. It's very easy to look down upon this breed. In fact, it was pretty difficult to look for something good about this breed while researching as most of the sources were against it. Some protest against this saying that wildcats should just be left alone and others are supportive of it. What do you think? And if I missed any information in this episode, then certainly let me know in the comments. Stay tuned, my next video will be kicking off a new series where I talk about cat body language. Anyways, thanks for watching this cat read profile. This has been Cat's Love. See you next episode. Stay tuned, the Chantilly Tiffany's next. Pump it up, kitty. Just pump it up, kitty cat. Where you at? There you go, put two paws on the floor. Two in the air and then just go. Kitty go, kitty go, kitty go. And just ride, kitty ride, kitty ride, kitty roll. And just ride.